Hi guys, and welcome to the 42nd episode of Dreamers and Doers. Welcome, Richie. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and as you can see, we're in Richie's gym. So you'll hear a little bit of um, people hitting the pads, working the out, pads, having yeah. a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah just down at uh, Bondi Boxing Club at Waterloo. So always busy. Nice. And Richie was just training. And uh, I interview in this podcast people who follow their passion, mm -hmm. which I think you do, Richie. Yeah, like I like to think so too. You know, I, um, yeah, I've just try to follow things I really enjoy doing, mm. you know, things I am passionate about. And um, yeah, I feel very grateful to have been able to incorporate that into my, you know, my mm. everyday life and into a bit of a career. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's important to do that. Uh, I could imagine it's hard to be happy otherwise. Mm. Um, so I usually start with the person's story a bit. So mm -hmm. uh, you're a bra boy. Yeah. You yeah. have the tattoo, right? I or? do, yeah, across my stomach. So <laughs> nice. um, yeah, born and bred down at Maroubra. Um, okay. Still still live down there today. Still, all my best mates are bra boys and, and, and from the area. So very proud of the community down mm. there and the area that I grew up in. And um, yeah, start off as a kid. We were actually had a house just, just outside of Maroubra, Little Bay. And um, you know, I've always been in passionate about the ocean and surfing yeah. it's always been my number one um, thing to do in life especially okay. as a little kid and uh, my uncle he's a surfer he lives up at Avalon he's, he's English but he, he's a mad surfer as well so always want to be in and around the water growing up I did nippers as a kid and I uh, joined Maroubra Surf Life Saving Club and yeah just do, I was just surf mad that's all I want to do I wanted, mm. you know, my, my dream as a kid was to become uh, you know world surfing champion and okay. Tom Carroll was my idol and um, so every spare moment I want to be around the beach and um, mm. that's why I was always down at Maroubra and then joined the Board Riders Club when I was about 10 and that's where I met all the boys and uh, found that community and they took me under their wing, uh, which I was very grateful for and mm. I lived down the surf shop pretty much, you know there used to be a surf shop called Maroubra Underground which I just used to leave all my clothes out and my board and mum would pick me up in the afternoon so mm. yeah it's... Um, You're a very good friend with um, Mark Matthews. Yeah that's right, me and Mark grew up together, yeah we sort of met when we were 12, 13, again in Maroubra Board Riders, uh, you know, the Board Riders Club, um, and we just had you know, similar goals, similar passions. He was you know, the be one of the best surfers on the beach, yeah. and then you know, with guys like Kobe Abaddon and uh, Sonny Abaddon, Jai Abaddon, Wayne Cleveland, all these really good big wave surfers from yeah. Maroubra, Howie, Jamie Reid, um, Tony Seddon, like we had such a, a good strong wave um, community down at Maroubra. I was drawn to that as well, you know. Okay. I, um, and yeah. for the people who don't know, Mark Mike Hughes is, is a really famous big wave surfer. Yeah, one of the best big wave surfers in the world. Um, definitely you know, led the way here in, in, uh, in Australian big wave surfing. Uh, as a crazy story um, with some crazy injuries and coming back and then suffering more setbacks and mm. just persevering and coming up with um, these little crazy ideas like the, uh, you know, the Red Bull Cape Fear contest that was held. Uh, I saw, I saw you riding, so there's that, it's meant to be kind of one of the most dangerous waves in the world, right? Ours here yeah. in, in Botany Bay. So that was, that was a phenomenal event. Um, and you yeah. surfed it at night? We surfed it at night together, yeah, as a part of uh, the film that we did called Fighting Fear that uh, myself, Mark and uh, our best mate, mm. uh, Makari D'Souza put together. So yeah, very fortunate to go out there, a bunch of guys, you know, they, mm. that's who I drew inspiration off. and, and um, yeah, I was lucky to have people to look up to and was taken on their wings. So when I wanted to have a go at big wave surfing, they led the way and, and showed me how to do it. Mm. Mm. And so, so obviously you kept doing big wave surfing. Yep. But as a career, you moved more towards uh, fighting. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Where's that? It wasn't really a, like a, a, I remember sitting there making a choice. That's mm -hmm. now I want to make a career at, uh, in a mixed martial arts. Um, I've always loved training. I've always loved mm -hmm. staying fit. Uh, and I was always drawn you know, to boxing and then um, you know, in my sort of late teens I was introduced to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, and again you know, growing up in that Maroubra community where you know, some of the best boxers in Australia and Ronnie Reardon, mm. Kurt Barham who's my age was, you know, had an amazing professional career so we're always in and around combat sports and I, I joke around saying I have like a little bit of small man syndrome whatever I always wanted to say yeah I can do that and I can, you know, can get in there and compete with the bigger guys or always maybe mm. speak before I think you know. Yeah. That's probably why I did wave surfing as well. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll pal out, and then you know, now they have to do it. And mm. Same with fighting, but I always, yeah, I've always loved to compete and stay fit. And um, yeah, I was, we've always boxed down at Maroubra, and um, then I was introduced, like I said, to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with Bruno mm. Pano and Alex Pratz. They brought it to the beach, and uh, I started competing in that. So I was just doing individual components of mixed martial arts, yeah. but 
but I really enjoyed them all. Uh, they really crossed over well into my surfing. You know, by this stage I was I was trying to make a run of you know professional big wave surfing. So staying fit and having confidence in your you know your physical self uh, helps when you're in, you know, in the ocean. And so it was just yeah a really good uh, you know marriage of, of two sports. And then yeah I started competing in both boxing and jiu jitsu. And I thought you know, the emergence of mixed martial arts was really on the rise and it gained a lot of popularity. And there's promotions around yeah. Sydney. Uh, around like, you know, 2005, around that time. So I just thought, yeah, I'll, I'll try my luck at mixed martial arts and um, yeah, whether I walk inside the cage and freeze and never want to go back, uh, that's cool, but I just want to experience it and see how, um, yeah, see what it's like. Because um, I thought I could box a little bit, I could do a bit of grappling, so mm. why not give it a go? And yeah, loved it, had, had a bit of success early and was hooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go back to that. But uh, the last part also I thought of, so here we talk about fear. Yeah. Obviously, there's big wave surfing, there's uh, the fighting part, and also I guess w your, the environment where you grew up, mm -hmm. you kind of need to overcome fear, right? Because Marubra and being and the Bra Boys was kind of a tough. Uh, I'd say you gotta be tough. Yeah, definitely. Like it was. Uh, Just you know, can you explain? Because some people listening to this might be French or anything. Yeah, yeah. So Maruba's had a, a rich history of a, a very strong tight knit community, and um, uh, probably about thirty years ago, uh, the boys, because a lot of other sort of gangs around the area, or you no, know, Maruba never really had a gang, but just the local surfers. You know, they've always yeah. had a bunch of different names for, over the years. Um, in the last thirty years, they've been you know called Bra Boys and. And uh, you know, not surfers, but other groups of guys from around the area to come and, and give give trouble down at the beach. And um, yeah, the local surfing community sort of got a bit sick of it and said, "Well, yeah. this is where we're from. This is what we're proud of. We're not going to leave the area and look for trouble. But if people want to come here, we're going to band together and okay. call ourselves our, the Bra Boys." And and uh, we're you know, so proud of that. We're going to get it tattooed on us. So they started getting mm -hmm. Bra Boys tattooed on themselves. And okay. and uh, that was like yeah, over 30 years ago now. And there's hundreds of us and yeah, tattoos everywhere. And um, that's basically how it came. So we've got a reputation as being quite localised and now there's, mm -hmm. there's trouble in the water and whatnot, but this happens across the world at all, you know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of the surfing community and everyone's, uh, that localism is is, uh, is found all around the world, but probably within Sydney and Australia, it's probably a bit more so down at Maroubra and yeah, got the reputation is a, a tough place and a bit of trouble. Um, and it was definitely a, a testosterone fueled environment to grow up in, you know, it was, uh, it was very, very much testosterone charge going up and down as a kid. So to show fear or, you know, to uh, you know, to run away from a fight or not paddle out when the waves got big, yeah. you would get some flack for it for sure, you know. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I was definitely one who, who, who felt that peer pressure a lot, you know, always want to try and press my mates. And uh, yeah, you know, not always, influ you know, was influenced in the right way. And uh, as I grew and, and learned, I, you know, I, yeah, had to learn the hard way a few times, but yeah, I, I don't regret it at all. I, I really, um, I'm really grateful for the environment I grew up in, and uh, all the people that you know that I looked up to, you know, people they not so good influences, some but you know, great influences. It's, it's all a part of, of what got me here today, and um, yeah, some of the mistakes I made again, I wouldn't change because they were, they were the, sort of the biggest learning um, yeah. experiences that I've had. Yeah, that's that's the reason. I guess that's partly the reason why you become more fearless than in everything in your career. Well, yeah, I, I think there's many factors. I think. You know, um, I've always loved the challenge, and, and I still do today. Like I, I fought recently, I made my pro boxing debut, and and I was questioning myself, like, why do I want to keep doing this? You now I'm, I'm 35 years old. Now I've got a daughter. You now I've got other work opportunities and commitments. Um, and I sat down. I actually spoke to a professional about it, and um, yeah, just worked out that I'm someone who likes to have that challenge, mm -hmm. likes to have it be on a mission, and. Um, yeah, definitely growing up, I, I always wanted to impress my mates too. That peer pressure thing, I'd always, um, yeah, yeah. I guess that ego, you know, I was driven a bit yeah, by yeah. ego. Um, but again, I, I always enjoyed the feeling of being terrified on the on the shore. Yeah. About the big surf, yeah. paddling out, and dealing with that fear. Yeah. Coming in, standing on dry land, and just being proud mm. that I was able to get out there and do it. May not have caught many big waves or anything, but just from a young age, I remember. Or at least trying to get out. Sometimes yeah. I wouldn't even get out the back. I was get washed back to shore. But I just there was a feeling, just very like internal. I wasn't doing it for anyone else. But I'm glad I sort of didn't let the fear stop mm. me from doing that. And now I've come back in better for it, regardless and of the result. I feel like I'm I'm better for that experience. Yeah. yeah. And so you definitely feel the fear. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we often say like, well, like. The real warrior spirit is not really to not have fear, but to feel it, but still do 
what you should do. Exactly, and um, and I still struggle with that. You know, whether it be stepping in the ring or the cage or paddling out, the fear is there. It's, it's a whirlwind of emotions. You know, the anxieties, fears, but there's excitement, adrenaline, joy. It's about yeah, not letting the fear take hold and and um, yeah, I guess not trying to control it, just dancing with it a little bit, you know, and, it, mm. and it's there for a reason because it, you know, your senses are heightened, you're, you're ready to perform at your best, that, you know, fear is all a part of that. So it's just, yeah, with experience learning that it's there for a reason. You know, your opponent, they're, they're going through the exact same, um, you know, and, and in the ocean, like I said, it's, it makes you be, you know, aware of everything and switched on and, and allows you to perform at your best, I believe. So, mm. yeah, I, I get scared and, you know, anxious and this fear stepping in the ring just for a sparring session you know same as i do you know, my whole career so it's um yeah it is it, it, part of that it's addictive too i i mm. enjoy the fear i don't know i guess it's why we go on roller coasters mm. or we watch a scary movie because it's yeah. a part of us where we enjoy it yeah you know? well that, that does seem pretty common in uh, when you do things that are seen like as extreme or like unpleasant by most of the population is that you end up liking it it's like you know people who run um, ultra marathon obviously it's very painful but they yeah. learn to kind of like like the pain absolutely yeah and it's you go to places you know that you sort of you don't expect and it's, you grow i think it's great personal growth in in those kind of challenges you set yourself and um yeah it's 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 really achieving when you set itself a goal and and um, you deal with all the fears and all that and you know, you're still able to achieve that goal as it's quite rewarding. It's very addictive, mm. and, and you you want to keep setting those challenges and, and experiencing those you know that wide range of emotions and and seeing if you can um, work it out and get through it. You know, mm. yeah, That's very interesting. So apart from that mentality of just okay, I'll do it. I'm liking the fear. Yes. And by the way, um, about liking what's unpleasant, it's the same with the cold. So I did an interview with that Wim Hof instructor yeah, exactly. last week. Yeah. You learn to love the cold. You really like it. So yeah, now I've done a few Wim Hof seminars and workshops. Yeah. And yeah, um, don't know. yeah, it's not pleasant. Being yeah. like, but the, the feeling you get after it yeah. and that you've done yeah. it. And it's done it. Not, not only physiologically, the feeling that you get, but mentally... Mm. That you know you sat through that and you got it done and you know you know how good it is for you so you're yeah. happy that you've done something that's good for yourself um but it's that again that little challenge you know that little goal you set yeah. to maybe sit in this ice bath for two minutes mm. um yeah, it, it's a great feeling and I, i'm a big believer nothing really comes easy you know what i mean mm. nothing comes i think nothing great comes out of a little bit of suffering a little bit of sacrifice yeah. And, and um yeah I'm a, I'm a believer in that um so you talked about to overcome fear. It's, it's mainly mind-driven. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll do it, and you make your mind, right? Yeah. Uh, Wim Hof is kind of more. It's also mind-driven, but also body-driven. Like, yeah. do you have? So my question is, do you have a path from saying, okay, I want to do it, and, and having that commitment? Do you have any practices you use, like breathing, music, meditation, to to help you overcome fear on top of making that decision? Uh, well, you know what helps me overcome the fear is my preparation and yeah. knowing that, I, that I've, you know, haven't cut any corners in preparation. I've done all the little bits, you know, all the little one percent. That gives me confidence, which helps manage with the fear and yeah. and um, yeah, you know, with the breathing and stuff. I've just recently got into Wim Hof and started doing those kind of things, okay. meditation and visualiza visualization. I've been doing that for the majority of my career because... Do you do them like before fights? Yeah, I'll sit down, I'll find a space for half an hour, 40 minutes, and I'll just go through all, all the scenarios, good and bad, okay. and you know, picture myself working through them. You know, I know okay. how to get out of the bad situations. I can visualize myself, myself you know, having my hand raised in the fight, just all this kind of stuff, just so. I'm a little bit calmer for the rest of the day because yeah. sometimes when you've got a fight coming up, it can be like chatter in the back of your head all day, you know, mm. about the fight, thinking about yeah. your opponent, whatever it may be. What happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? And it can be quite exhausting, you know, mentally yeah. exhausting, having that go on all day. So if you set aside a little bit of time mm. and just go all through all through all the scenarios, feel c confident and comfortable mm. with all those, and that you can you can work a way out of them. I feel a little bit rested for the rest of the day, like okay. yeah. So it calms that chatter a little bit, um, but definitely a big believer in that it's all mental. Yeah, mm. like you know. You know, competing, uh, you know, so you hear it when I was growing up and in my teens, training or whatnot, you, you know, you hear the old cliche, you know, it, it's 10% physical, it's 90% mental, and I'll laugh, go, nah, it's all about being bigger, faster, stronger, you know what I mean? What's this mental stuff? This, I was just naive and I was full of confidence, and, yeah. and I just, yeah, I used to laugh at that, that, um, you know, that kind of talk, but 
as my career progressed, I got more experience, I suffered some setbacks, some losses. My mind starts to play tricks on me, I have doubts. So I quickly become to realise, yeah, it's, it's, it's all mental, you know what I mean? This, you now you've got the body that you know, is the machine, but if the control centre's not yeah. working well, well then the, the, the machine's not going to function as it should. So. And, and the body's going to be a reflection of your mind anyway, 100%, right? Because 100%. Because how you need your mind to show up in the gym every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I have been victim to that. I've been walked into fights where mentally I'm not there. You know, mm. and I, I perform well below par, I don't get the result. And um, you know, not because, you know, and, and no disrespect to my opponent, not because they're a better athlete or a better fighter, it's just I wasn't switched on mentally. You know? I missed opportunities, I didn't have, remember, I was in the mental state to win that fight before I walked into the, the cage. So, huge believer in it's all mental. And um, yeah, that. Yeah, if, if you're, if that's not, you know, working, you know, 100%, well then the body's not going to do, you know, mm. do it, you know, achieve it, it's best either, so, yeah, mm. I've been putting a lot more work into that side of things and working with sports psychiatrists and, um, yeah, incorporate a lot more kind of stuff like meditation, breathing, you know, into my preparation, mm. yeah. Mm. And do you meditate daily, do you have a regular practice? No. I don't. I started, I think it was last year, I, every day, at least for five minutes, until about March. Because yeah. uh, my wife, she's a big meditator, she practices Vipassana, she has done for, oh, for many years. She's, have you ever done Vipassana? No, oh, I mean, I, I haven't done the 10 day sit. Yeah. Now, she's done five or six really? 10 days yeah. now, so. Um, Are you going to do it? It's something that I like to tick off, you know, and, and try for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I struggle just finding the time, five minutes a day, so. Um, but it is something that, Mm. Just one of those things. I'll, I'll but like sometimes to it can be easier to be like thrown in the water. Yeah, and knowing and you, maybe Vipassana would be uh, better because it's kind of a, a challenge, you know. Okay, you gotta. Yeah, gotta and that. I do struggle with it, you know. I think yeah. I know it doesn't come easy. It's not. It's not like a. Um, but you see what I mean? If you're a bit competitive, then yeah. you see, okay, 10 days is going to be intense, like well, easier than I think I've been maybe motivated to, to, to okay. face those challenges oh, that, yeah. that, that, that pop up. Then I've heard it's extremely tough. Uh, extremely rewarding though, there's you know, massive highs and massive lows yeah. throughout those 10 days. So I will not experience that and, and like I said, it'll be like an ass bath or something. Like something that you've set and you, regardless if it was all pleasant, you'll be proud that you've done it. So my wife's big, you know, big encouragement in that, she'd like, you know, um, yeah, that, that I, I should try it. But you know, I, know, I know meditation comes in many forms um, and yeah, to find what's right. The, I honestly, I love going spearfishing, being in the ocean and mm. you know, I often go like, you know, by myself or surfing, and, you know, that kind of solitude. Uh, I find is a, you know, I, I feel I have a, you know, it's like my sort of meditation away, just being in the ocean by yourself. But time flies and, and uh, you often don't think about anything that what's right in front of you. you know? So um, yeah, but it is something I like to do more of, for sure. And yoga, there's all these practices. Now I'm getting older. Um, yeah, it's not about being all bigger, faster, stronger. It's about having that balance, you know, and, and having a, yeah, a little bit calmer up top and less less mental chatter. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, question. What's the scariest thing you've ever done? Scariest? Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah, it is a funny question. Like being in the ocean and some of the waves that we've, we've gone, traveled and surfed. Yeah. Um, yeah, terrifying, you know, because yeah. the, what potentially could go wrong there. Yeah, um, like you know, Tahiti, Chopu, is so many mm. scary factors. Here in Australia, like a ship turns, it's freezing cold, or Western Australia, and it's sharky, so the shark factor is extremely scary. So, yeah, I don't know. And then stepping in the cage in front of you know 60,000 people, mm. um, that's very overwhelming as well. But when I weigh up logically, being in the ocean is far more dangerous. You know, a lot more can go wrong. There's no medical staff on standby, and uh, you can't just tap out and have it all be over and done with. Uh, but I found a level of comfort in the ocean. So yeah, probably the scariest thing is probably walking in, you know, uh, Etihad Stadium, you know, in front of six thousand people yeah. to to fight the UFC. It's the UFC's biggest event. That that was pretty, you know, scary. Um, but yeah, I also being in the ocean and just knowing that anything go could go wrong. It's really you got very limited control over what happens. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's a toss. Probably, uh, well, I'd say. I think about logically being in the ocean. Some of you know, some of these waves is uh is probably the scariest moment. Okay, okay. Maybe maybe down in Western Australia, some some huge waves down there where you're by yourself. It's very isolated. There's a lot of big fish swimming around. Mm. Um, yeah. And if things were to go wrong, you'll be in a you'll be in um yeah. be in a bit of a pickle for sure. Mm.
Um, that's really interesting because you talked about the actual danger yep. versus fear. Yep. Because obviously, like to me, fear as a feeling is kind of something you want to overcome, yep. a bit irrelevant, but not danger because danger is real and we don't want to, you know, yeah. end up dying or something. Yep. So, like, do you find like? What I hate is when I'm fearful of something that's not dangerous. But then if it's dangerous, it's a different story, right? Yeah, so I mean, I feel, yeah, obviously it's like a self-preservation kind of fear is yeah. there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it can also, like your friends, like maybe like public speaking or doing something that yeah. really is no physical damage. But yeah, I mean, mentally though, it, like if things were to go right when you get up on that stage, um, it, it could be pretty demoralizing too, so. Uh, yeah, fear comes in many forms, and that's why my, my friend that you uh, you mentioned earlier, Mark Matthews, yeah. he travels the world now, giving you know uh, huge talks on, on fear and on how to manage it, manage it, and that he, he he speaks to big corporate groups and everything because yeah, like I said, fear comes in many forms, whether it be a physical threat or or, or otherwise. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy, and we all have the f same physiological I think reaction to it, whether it be you know a lion about to jump out the, the you know <laughs> the forest or. Or walking out on stage to talk, um, mm. yeah, I think you know, your heart rate goes up, you get start to sweat, it's, it's all the same. And so do you find that these practices help you with fear of things like, yeah, public speaking? Um, yeah, and I, I, does it help with things that are completely different, but where usually fear holds us back? Yeah, it, it does, and, and, I, and I try to recognize it, and if I find myself worrying about something that may or may not happen. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm, now I've experienced the fear over me walking out there and maybe not, not speaking well or getting you know, my words right. Yeah. That might not happen. So I don't know why I'm reacting already like mm. it's going to happen. You know what I mean? I'm already reacting as if that's going to happen. So yeah, just just try to go back to your basic breathe, relax. Um, you now when I'm going out into the, the ring to spar or, or to compete or in the ocean, I know staying calm is always going to help your chances of, of performing your best and um, you know, it helps with the fear. So just um yeah breathe smile i do a bit of work at fox sports and every time i'm a bit nervous going on camera i don't, I don't stuff up and you know stumble my words i just take a big breath get, like, mm. smile to myself and go right like, um worst can happen still is not that bad you know what mm. i mean so just yeah. chill out and uh yeah a bit of perspective you yeah exactly putting things in perspective often helps yeah yeah mm. and i wanted to go a bit towards the why like um yeah, why do you put yourself in pretty extreme situations like this big wave surfing or the, those fights? Um, good, yeah, I, I do really enjoy it, especially you know, both big wave surfing and you know, competing as a professional fighter. I, I love the lifestyle as well. I love yeah. training, I love staying fit, I love being around the ocean. Uh, they really, you know, um, co uh, complement each other well. Mm, you know, better being in than the gym. being in an office nine to five. Exactly, exactly. I, um, you know, I'm a car player by trade, so. <laughs> Something again. I enjoy doing. You know what I mean. I, I, um, yeah. I, I prefer surfing and, and training, but yeah. I, I, I do enjoy you know, um, you know, working, providing, and be, I work for myself, so I can sort of juggle it all and, and still accommodate everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do because I, I love to set those challenges and, and have that cherry dangled in front of me. You know, whether it be fighting or, or surfing. So um, yeah. I don't know. I don't really know the why. The why has been I've been throwing that around in my own head a little bit lately because, um, yeah, I had a young daughter um, a while ago. She's two, and I'm 35. I'm still wanting to compete, but that question is why do I still want to compete? Why do I still want to step in the ring or the cage? And and uh, now I've been fighting for over 13 years now professionally, so that question is getting asked to myself a lot more. But. Um, yeah, I want to be doing it for the right reasons too, you know. Yeah. I don't want to be doing it for the wrong reasons and, and fight beyond my years and, and take unnecessary punishment or, yeah, be not be competing at a level that I want to compete at. If mm -hmm. I can't compete at a, at a level that I've set myself, then I hope I'm wise enough to recognise that and step away. Um, but yeah, I just, I love that little mission to set myself. I love that little challenge and I love having direction, you know, mm. having, um, so whether that be, Working hard, laying lots of carpets. So I mean, a family can go away on a holiday. You know, if that's the goal, or if it's to compete, or if it's what it may be, I like to, to be driven by something and be motivated by a little goal. And then looking into more the emotions you feel when you're big surfing those big waves or being in the yeah. in the fight in the middle of um, sixty thousand people, you said. Yeah, yeah. In, in Etihad Stadium, it was yeah, it was the biggest UFC event I think to, still today. So how do you so, feel? 
two, they were two very different um, yeah. emotions. Uh, being out in the ocean, uh, I love it. I love nature. I love being out in nature with it, yeah. and, and in the ocean, it's so raw and wild. Um, it's, I love that feeling, you know, mm. that sense of adventure, being somewhere isolated and just challenging, challenging yourself against this energy, you know, that, that's yeah. Mother Nature and watching these waves just unloading the reef. Mm. It's, it's such a um, such an amazing feeling, you know, like it's so exhilarating, it's joyful, but obviously it's, it's, there's fear there because you want to go out and, and test yourself on these waves yeah. as well. The stepping into the cage is a, is a different feeling, you know, we've got all these eyes on me. Um, it's not really natural. I think it is very natural for, for us as humans to be out in nature and challenging ourselves in some yeah. regard, climbing a mountain or whatnot, swimming in the ocean. That's a very like primal kind of, I think we get a joy from that and that's, that's where we're meant to be, you know. This urban construct mm -hmm. is, is not a real natural setting for, for you know, our, you know, us as humans in the big scheme of things, you know what I mean? We haven't been living like this for, for long at all, but yeah, stepping into the cage in front of so many people, it's, it's fear of embarrassment what people may think or not performing to your best you know you just put months and months of preparation into getting here now it's time to get it right and not make any mistakes so that mm. kind of is very uh, makes you very anxious yeah. um, it's funny I'm not too scared about the, the physical threat I know my opponent is, is in there and he wants to hurt me he wants to you know submit me or knock me out but I'm not too worried about that I'm just yeah more worried about letting my friends and family my trainers my training partners down for mm. some reason um, yeah. And just not performing at your best, and, and yeah, all these eyes on you, it, you that pressure it can be overwhelming and uh, um, because it can, very be uncomfortable. Of, it can be months of training and stopping a few seconds, right? exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you make one little mistake, and your, your opponent capitalizes, and then you know, you're walking back to the change rooms with your hands, you know, your face in your hands. Yeah, you know, I can't believe that just happened on the you know, on the, on the biggest stage in the world, so um. You know, the thought of that, and that's and that's where I, you know, got str I struggled with, and and that why I went and sought some you know, worked with a sports psychiatrist just to mm -hmm. keep that that chatter in in a positive direction, yeah. and not let the the you know, the worries of what may happen or may not happen, mm. and the consequences, of the result or whatnot, overwhelming because so much of that is out of your control. Just focus yeah. on my preparation. You know, um, yeah, John Novak was a guy I work with. He was phenomenal, and he called it the boomerang effect. Just putting positive thoughts out there, and it comes back. And that, mm. not just my fighting, but that happens. That'll, that'll have a positive impact on my, my home life, my relationship, with my wife, my child. Every all kind of interactions, all relations. You know, um, yeah. And don't worry about the uncontrollables, which you know I was a victim of. I'd worry about my opponent, what he's doing. You know, mm. all these things that were just take away energy from myself and, and it'll be so uh, counterproductive. So, yeah. Do you read Stoicism? What do you mean? Do you know Stoicism? Stoicism? No, I know of the term, you know, Stoic. Philosophy, it, it, yeah. Yeah, guys. Well, just, they're, they're it. well, you just reinvented it then. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I have, I, could, I can't oh, recite what I know, you know. Yeah. We used to sit on a porch or something, so that's what Stoicism came from. Yeah, write. that's where it came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, so, um, but they're big on basically simple principles to live a good life and one of them is it's pretty obvious but we don't do it a lot which yeah. is focusing on what you can control yeah right exactly yeah and it big be and i still today worry about things that are out of my control and yeah, i have to catch yourself out it's, it's so you're human natural yeah but it's um <laughs> it could be so refreshing just to step back out look that's out of my control i can't wait it's just like you actually feel the weight lift off your shoulders and go okay Mm. Nothing I can do can, can change this if it does happen or it doesn't happen. So let's just enjoy today, enjoy the moment, and prepare the best way you can. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's wild. The the the, uh, the mind can play a lot of tricks on you. That's for sure. So yeah, it's good to learn learn about it and learn some simple techniques. You know, whether it be breathing or not to worry about the uncontrollables. controllables. Mm. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. So we're we're gonna be at the end yep. soon. Do you have yeah? Do you have tips for people, you know, who want to do something, whether it's like climb a mountain or something physical or even public speaking, but um, who feel like they're a bit that fear is holding them da um, back? Yeah, well, I guess it's kind of a, a what quote. Be simple tips. Maybe? Oh, little tips. Um, I, I tell like young people I work with, like don't be afraid of failing you know yeah. don't be scared like so don't let that stop me from trying something yeah. because failure is, is one of the best I get mechanisms for growth you know yeah. when things don't go like that what well, helped me to get the, my career with some of my losses you know that mm. experience you know uh, really helped improve me as a fighter so never let the, you know, the fear of failure stop you from doing something and you know, Mark Matthews you know, a good friend of mine always says you know 
the best feelings or the biggest accomplishments is always often just on the other side of that fear, you know? Yeah. If you could just manage that fear, work through it, some of the most rewarding things in life are just on the other side of it. So, um, yeah, I think regardless, give things a go, um, and you're going to be better off for the experience, you know what I mean? Like, I think, you know, I, I really do. Um, yeah, so, and I just say, don't die wondering. I hate, I hate the feeling of that, um, I should have done that, or I should have paddled out, or I should have made the most of that opportunity, I should have let those doubts or those fears stop me from doing that, because it could have been an amazing you know, opportunity, experience. Um, so that, that, that really eats away at me, and almost eats away at me more than taking on that challenge, not succeeding in it, would be easier to live with than it is now not taking that challenge or that opportunity or something, now living with that wonder if, I wonder, you know, so yeah. Without regrets, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's uh, so uh, yeah. I, I listened to actually a podcast about regrets, and the lady who was she worked in palliative care, palliative care. Ah, oh, was it the five things? Yeah, and, and that was such a like a, an awesome talk, and just made you realize, yeah, these these you know, these five comedies kept popping up, and they're so true. And yeah, I don't live with regrets, and I don't want to be someone on that deathbed. Yeah. saying oh, I wish I had done more of this or less of that or not worry about this or not worry about that yeah, mm. so unfortunately that realisation can come too late for a lot of us but hopefully yeah. you can, can work work it out a little bit more and just uh, yeah enjoy life and yeah, yeah. fear's there for a reason it, it, it's, a, it's a real a real emotion I like all emotions I think we should go through them all and not try to fight them and not suppress them everything you know whatever it may be it's all there for a purpose just like fear and um, yeah I think it helps us achieve some of our greatest goals. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think we're quite lucky. Like, uh, yeah, I think I heard about this lady, and it's good to hear about this yeah. when you're not like 85. Yeah, you know, exactly. When you can still do something about it. Yep. You know, that's so, you, know, you hear so many people they work in a job they don't like for so many years and they don't realize that they hate this job until it's too late. You know mm. what I mean? It's a little thing, just like, yeah, just really try to find in life what it is you love and, mm. and um, yeah because it's pretty short so yeah I don't understand spending all your time doing something you don't enjoy mm, yeah that's nice what's up for you now well, I'm actually going to work and lay some carpet now I know it's um, you know, it's a beautiful Easter weekend coming up so I spend some time mm. with the family I was do like, you have any fights coming up on um, um, boxing because you do boxing now right yeah well boxing. I fought all my professional careers mixed martial artists yeah. you know, for the last 13 years um, but the start of this year like well, all I was doing at the end of last year for the last six months was Jiu Jitsu Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because okay. I want to get my, my black belt eventually and I want to get my brown belt then my black belt so that was my goal first week in January Tony calls me and said I've got an opportunity for you to make your pro boxing debut and it's for a great cause to raise money for the local PCYC and uh, the fight was here at Bondi, so it was nice and local, and I thought, something I've always wanted to do is a challenge, that's what I feel like I'm lacking at the moment. Oh, well, I did have the, the jiu-jitsu, but I, that was a different challenge, opportunity that won't be there forever, so I just quickly jumped on that, and okay. I enjoyed it so much, I'd like to do it again. So, okay. yeah, looking to maybe take another opportunity in boxing, um, but also I want to try and chase my goals in Brazil jiu-jitsu as well, and if an opportunity po pops up in mixed martial arts, yeah, I would still consider it, you know, okay. I, I, I haven't completely hung up my gloves um, you know, in that sport, so yeah, but it's just not the end all and be all anymore. I do it because I really do love it. I do love the yeah. training. Um, you know, my goal isn't to make a run at the UFC anymore or uh, you know, achieve this title or achieve that title. I just love the training. I, I love getting in there to compete. So yeah, uncertain right now as to what um, you know, what I'll be doing. You know, whether it be boxing or mixed martial arts or, or jiu jitsu. But yeah, hopefully something pops up soon. I can commit to it mm. and then uh, just juggle everything else in life like I'm always doing and uh, yeah get in there and yeah uh, you know challenge yourself again and, and um, see how it goes yeah and how can people follow you uh, yeah just on all the normal social media you know my Instagram is just Richie Vass it's probably what I'm, I'm most active on uh, I've also got a podcast which I've been very lazy with called The Vass Files okay. uh, that I've been playing around uh, last year uh, I've been very slack with it this year <laughs> Um, you know, we also do a bit of work on Fox Sports, you know, just a, a bit of UFC commentary and, and analysts. So, um, yeah, when that's on, it's always good fun if you're a fan of UFC to, to check that out. But Do you like yeah. Joe Rogan? Yeah, I do like Joe Rogan. I think he's very, very interesting. Me. Yeah, yeah, he's a very interesting character. And, um, yeah, I'm only just get dipping my toe in podcasting, both listening now and getting my head around them. But, yeah, there's a lot of interesting ones out there. And he's such an intelligent guy across many fields. He's, he's good to listen to and gets lots of interesting characters in the seat. So, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, just, uh, yeah, I'm always around here, Eastern Suburbs, so if you ever say good day, just, if you ever see us, just say good day, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah, enjoy. Thanks, yeah. we have a little tradition, we finish these interviews with a hug. Hug it out, sorry about being sweaty and stinky, yeah, I've okay. got, most hugs are a lot cleaner than this, but yeah. That's good, Appreciate. it was good to be in your environment, I hope he, he was fine with the, the, the background noise, but it's cool to be in, the, in your gym. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you know, I thank you for for you know contacting and want to sit and have a chat. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So yeah, all the best with what you're doing as well. Thanks, Richie. Yeah. Thanks, guys.